All right, so we have the equation here. 3a minus 22 is equal to negative 2a minus 7. All right, so the first thing that we want to do is see if there's anything that we can simplify on the left-hand side of our equation or on the right-hand side. And in this case, there is nothing to simplify because we cannot combine terms with variables with constants, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to get all of the terms with coefficients on one side and all of the terms with constants on the other side. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop this equal sign down, all right, to separate our left from our right. We're just going to rewrite this first term because it has a coefficient. We're going to write all of our terms with coefficients on the left. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this negative 2a on the other side and move it across the equal sign. And when we do this, we have to write it as its opposite. So we're going to write it as plus 2a. Now on the right side, we're going to write all of our constants, which are the numbers that do not have a variable. So we already have a constant of negative 7 on the left, so we write that as is. We only change the sign when we move across the equal sign. So we're going to take this negative 22 and move it on the other side, which gives us positive 22. Now, we can combine everything on the left now because these are like terms. That gives us 5a. On the right, we have negative 7 and positive 22 which is positive 15. Now at this point, we can just see that a must be three because five times three is the only thing that will produce 15. But to show the work to its completion, we divide the coefficient by itself and we divide the constant on the other side by five and that leaves us with a is equal to three. All right, let's go ahead and do another example. For this problem, what we're going to do is we are going to simplify everything on the left and everything on the right, although everything on the right is already as simple as you can get it. There's nothing that we can combine there or shorten, but we can distribute this 4 to each term inside these parentheses. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 4 times 2, which is 8, and then we're going to do 4 times negative 3t, which is negative 12t. We always have to watch our signs. So this 4 is positive, and we multiplied it by a negative term. A positive times a negative is always a negative, and we just write a single minus to represent that. And then we bring down this plus 6t. And on the other side, we write negative 6t plus 8. All right, now on the left-hand side of our equation, we still have two terms that we can combine. We can combine these two t terms. So we're going to drop this 8, all right, and we're going to combine negative 12 and positive 6, which is negative 6t. And on the other side, we have negative 6t and positive 8. Now, what we should notice right here at this point is this. If you take a look at the term with your coefficient on the left, it is identical to the one on the right. And if you take a look at the constants on either side, they are also identical to each other. Now, when that situation arises, you would say that you have an infinite amount of solutions. Okay, an infinite amount of solutions. All right, now how do we know this? Well, it's, it's pretty simple. I mean, if you think about it, because everything on the left is identical to everything on the right. Whatever we plug into our variable, like so for example, let's say for t here, I plugged in the number three, I would also have to plug in a number three over here. So if we were to multiply this three by negative six and then add that eight and do the same thing over here, we would get the same answer on both sides. And it doesn't matter what we put in for t, we're always gonna get the same answer on the left as we do on the right because everything is identical on both sides. That's why the solutions are infinite. We can put any number in there, any real number in there will do, okay? Um, but you might have gotten to this point and said, hmm, you know, you might not have seen that or recognized that dynamic. So how would you know that the solutions are infinite? Well, if you kept solving, here's what would happen. So like, let's say you were to add 6t over here to move it and add 6t over here, 
that would be zero. And then let's say if you were to take this eight over here and move it to the other side by subtracting eight, you would get zero on the other side. You would get zero equals zero. When you ever get something that says zero equals zero, you know that you are going to have an infinite amount of solutions, okay? So you might not catch it initially when you set things up, but at the end, if zero equals zero, then you know that you have a situation where you have an infinite amount of solutions. All right, let's go ahead and do another example. All right, so with this equation, we have to use a distributive property on the left and on the right. So I'm gonna take my equal sign and drop it down a bit. And I'm going to distribute this nine to both terms inside the parentheses here. Nine times X is of course nine X and nine times two is 18. Now on the right side, we have to be careful because we're dealing with many negatives over here. So we're gonna start with negative six times positive four which produces negative 24. And then we have negative six times negative x, which produces positive six x. Because remember, a negative multiplied by another negative will always make a positive. That is why we write a plus sign here, all right? And of course, a single x means the coefficient is one. So six times one is six, and that is where I got the six from. And then we just drop this constant of 18 down. Now what we have to do is get all of our constants on one side of the equal sign and all of our coefficients on the other side, okay? And it really doesn't matter what side you do. Um, traditionally, most teachers like to put all of the variables over on the left and all of the constants over on the right, but it really doesn't matter, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to write all of my terms with coefficients on the left. Okay, so we already have 9x over here on the left. Okay, so I'm going to leave it over there. And on the right, we have a positive 6x. All right, so many times you'll see teachers say, well, I want you to write minus 6x on the right and show your work and then write minus 6x on the left. And that certainly is one way of doing it because that would leave you with 3x altogether, you know, but I want you to do it this way where you just rewrite positive 6x as negative 6x over on the other side so we can combine it, okay? So we moved this over on the left, and now I'm gonna take all of my constants on the right and just drop them down, negative 24, positive 18. If you don't jump over the equal sign, remember you do not write them opposite, you keep them as they are. And then we're gonna take this positive 18 over on the left and move it over on the other side and write it as negative 18. Okay, now we're gonna take 9x minus 6x, which is 3x. Um, right away, I see some opposite integers here. And when that happens, we know that that makes zero. So we're just gonna cross those off. And that leaves us with just negative 24. And now we're gonna divide both sides by the coefficient of three, leaving us with x equals negative 24 divided by three, which is negative eight. All right, let's go ahead and do another example. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna simplify as much as we can on the left first. On the right, there's nothing to simplify because we have an n term here and a constant, all right? So what we're gonna do is we are gonna rewrite this as four n plus one n, which is five n. So I'm just gonna write this n term on the left. So I just combine these two terms here. And this 2n over on the right-hand side, I'm just gonna write it on the other side of the equal sign by writing its opposite. I'm gonna write minus 2n. So we moved it on the other side by writing its inverse. And I'm gonna automatically take all of my constants and put them over on the right-hand side. We already have a 15 over here, so we're just gonna drop that down. We're gonna write this constant of positive three on the other side. So we have to write it as minus three, it's opposite. And that leaves us with five n take away two n, which is three n. And on the right hand side, we have 15 take away three, which is 12. Now at this point, we can just see using a little mental math that n must be four because three times four is the only thing that would make 12. 
So I honestly would be okay if you just wrote n equals 4. All right. However, teachers commonly say, well, I need to see you show the work. Well, okay, let's divide both sides by 3 by the coefficient. And that gives us n equals 4. And that is our answer. All right, let's go ahead and do another example. Okay, so on the left-hand side of this equation, there is nothing that we can simplify, so we are just going to rewrite the left side of our equation. But on the right-hand side, we can distribute this negative 6 to everything inside the parentheses. So we're going to do negative 6 times positive 1, which is negative 6. And we're going to take negative 6 and multiply by negative x, which is positive 6x. We cannot forget that a negative times a negative always produces a positive. The most common mistakes I see with my students is when they just mess up a sign, which messes up the entire answer. All right, let's make this look more like an X. It looks a little bit like a Y. There we go. All right, now what we're going to do next is this. At this stage, what I want you to notice is that if we were to look at our terms with the coefficients on either side, notice that they are identical to each other. We have a positive 6x on both sides. They are exactly the same. Now, if we look at the constants, we have different constants, so they are not equal to each other. Now, when that situation arises, where you have the same constants on each side of your equation, but you have different, I'm sorry, I should have said the same coefficients, I misspoke, and different constants, the answer would be no solution. There is no solution to this equation. Well, why is that? Well, it's because, let's rewrite this over here, 6x plus 1 equals negative 6 plus 6x. Six it is because, let's say we take this x term, right, this plus 6x, right, and do the inverse and move it to the other side of our equal sign. What happens is we end up canceling that x term out because 6x take away 6x is 0. So on the left, we have 0 plus 1, which is just 1. And on the other side, we have a constant of negative 6. So we have a statement where the two values are not equal to each other. One is not equal to negative six. And when you get that kind of situation, you are going to have no solution to that problem. Now, if you just recognize though, when you simplify at a certain point where you have the same coefficient on either side, so you have the same coefficient on either side, but you have different constants, you can just stop and say, I know there's going to be no solution to that equation because that x term with the coefficient is going to completely cancel itself out, leaving you with two constants that are not equal to each other. Okay, so there are no solutions to this problem. All right, let's go ahead and do another example. Okay, so first things first, everything on the left, we're just going to rewrite because nothing can be combined on the left because you cannot combine a term with a variable with a constant, okay? Now on the right-hand side, we have negative 2 that we have to distribute to the positive 1, which would produce negative 2, and we have to distribute negative 2 to negative 7n, a negative times a negative which makes a positive, and that would be positive 14n. All right, now what we're going to do is move all of our n terms, the terms with coefficients over on the left, and our constants over on the right. Well, this n term is already on the left, so we're just going to drop it down. We're going to move this positive 14n on the other side, and all you have to do is write its exact opposite on the other side, minus 14n. All right, so we moved it over. Now on the right-hand side, we already have a constant over there. It is negative 2, so we just drop it straight down. And we're going to take this positive 34 and move it to the other side by writing minus 34. And we combine like terms on the left here, these two n terms. 
So we have a positive 5n and a negative 14n, which would give us negative 9n. And over on the right, we have two negatives. So when we combine those, we're going to have negative 36. All right, now what we have to do is divide both sides by our coefficient of negative 9. And that would give us n equals positive 4. Remember, a negative divided by a negative is always a positive. All right, let's go ahead and do another example. All right, so first things first. What we're going to do is we are going to simplify as much as we can on the left and on the right as well. So I'm going to drop my equal sign down to start with. Well, because this is so long, I'm going to wait to write my equal sign. I'm just going to start simplifying first. So we're going to distribute this negative 5 to everything inside the first set of parentheses. So negative 5 times positive 1 is negative 5. Negative 5 times negative 5x is positive 25x. All right. All right. Now, a big mistake people make is after they simplify a part of their equation, they automatically write the sign that they see next. But I don't want you to do that yet. I don't want you to write a plus sign because, like in this case, if I take positive 5 times negative 8x, it's going to make a negative because a positive times a negative is a negative. So we're going to write minus 40x. And then we're going to take positive 5 and multiply it by negative 2, which is negative 10x. So we write minus 10. Well, I misspoke. There is no x there. It's just 5 times negative 2, which is negative 10. Now we can write our equal sign. That is why I waited to write the equal sign, because I didn't know how long all of this was going to be over here on the left. Now on the right hand side, we have two x terms that we can combine. We have two negative x terms here. So when we add them together, that would be a total of negative 12x. Remember when both of your signs are the same sign, like two negatives, and when you combine them, it's going to stay negative. All right. And then you add the numbers together. Okay. It's like if you went four below zero and you dropped eight more from negative four, you would be at negative 12. All right, now we're going to simplify the left-hand side a bit more. And we're going to take 25x and negative 40x and combine those two together first, our x terms. And that is going to give us negative 15x. And I'm going to go to the other side and take this x term and move it over to that side by doing the opposite. So we write plus 12x. Now we're going to take our constants and move them on the right-hand side. And they're both negative, so when we put them on the other side, they are going to become positive. So negative 5 becomes positive 5, and negative 10 becomes positive 10. So we write 5 plus 10. All right. So if we combine negative 15x and positive 12x, that is negative 3x. And if we combine 5 and 10 together, that is 15. Now, at this point, we should be able to use a little mental math and say x is going to be equal to positive 5. Because, oh, I, I misspoke. x is going to be negative 5 because negative 3 times negative 5 is positive 15. But to show the work, we're going to divide both sides by negative 3. And that will give us x equals negative 5. Hey, I just want to say thanks for checking out this math tutorial. Please don't forget to hit that subscription button and activate notifications so you can be informed as I upload new math tutorials that just might help you with your math homework. Until next time, this is Shane Masonette with Masonette Math.